Coming to you live from Manhattan, it's Radio Free Equestria. I don't think anyone can see the Manhattan out there. Actually, I think they can. And we're not even in the Manhattan. We're outside of Manhattan in... <laughs> I couldn't come up with a good pony name. No. Anyway. Anyway, so the great <laughs> dragon migration happened, and we learned a lot about dragons. Mostly Actually, we, we learned... didn't learn shit about dragons. They totally copped out and didn't tell us anything. What we did learn is that adolescent dragons are apparently high school frat boys. Well, we also sort of learned that, you know, the big dragons are sort of, you know, they're mostly like they've been previously. You know, they just sort of sit around. They don't really care. Just like token dragons, yep. right? Notice how they kept they don't looking. Even, they don't even, like, see the mortal world or even the adolescent dragon world. It's, well, like, they completely beneath them. They kept looking them. up. Like, they noticed. Like, you'd see them raise an yeah. eyebrow and then like, go, they would look okay. and be mildly interested, but, like, they don't really care about anything that's going on outside the big dragon world. What was interesting is that Spike, when he went on his adolescent rampage... He was basically barely communicative and kind of a brute. But yet those adolescent dragons weren't like that. They were, while they were kind of dicks, they were at least sentient and reasonable and you could talk to them and they acted kind of like jerk ponies do. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, their jerkiness, right, was just dragon culture, right? And the greediness was the inherent, you know, genetic, the nature versus nurture, right? The nature is greed. The nurture was asshole. I guess my question is, why did Spike go so crazy? Was it because he hasn't experienced dragon culture? So the greed is like burning and building up inside of him? I think it's just the way dragons are, right? And in- but how come they're normal? Like maybe, maybe when they go through that LSD. Because they had, because they had hordes. But Spike got way bigger too. There's also the fact that you know, the Spike was going all dragon in a place where there weren't other dragons at the time, right? Those Maybe big, dragons have a thing. Right. Like they... He wasn't going to go like that if there's a big dragon right there, right? It's like, you know, okay, you got a big horde. This dude is sitting next to you with a horde 20 times the size. The dragon's it's like, all... stop it. Yeah, he's like, chill. And you're just like, oh, shit. Right? So the fear effect sort of cancels out. No, but also the physical Imagine size. if there's only one dragon left because he's the last one. I am the last one. And that he had just, you know, he could just take all that he wanted to take. Mm. He's just like, woohoo! You wonder if anything like that happened in the pre Celestia Luna days. I don't know. The thing that really confused me was how the ponies were like, we know next to nothing about dragons. It's except like, that they have this migration. Well, and and, except- and, right. They knew that, that the, when the migration was happening, they knew it was coming. They had previously learned that, uh, you know, dragons grow with greed. He is starting to mature. Of this fact, I am quite sure. Mature? So he's just growing up? But that doesn't explain why he keeps grabbing things. A dragon's heart is prone to greed. A steady diet to make growth speed. Then the resulting bigger size only makes their hunger rise. If this trait should go unchecked, if Spike continues to collect, more growth will certainly occur. He is going to turn into a monster. <gasps> you mean the more things a dragon collects, the bigger and greedier he gets? They knew, like, right, that's... they knew that when that dragon parked his ass in that cave on the top of the hill, that that meant he was going to sleep there for thousands of but years. But that is still relatively nothing. They know that dragons like hordes. They like to eat gems. They breathe fire. Yeah, well, I can figure They're that dangerous, out. Dangerous, right? But they learned. They, they knew a lot about dragons. And Scott, that how could the, they not even have one book that even had that information? That in is it? the accumulated knowledge of thousands of years of pony civilization. That's all they know. I also have a feeling that uh, they haven't tried too hard. Well, no, that some pony knows more. Than, I don't think Celestia. I think does. Celestia knows. I think she's. There's no way she's been that old. And she just hasn't had to deal with dragons that so much. So here's look at my... how much they've dealt with dragons in this short period of time. Just so here's a few my years. thought. My thinking is that when Celestia presented that egg for the magic school test, that that was not the actual test. The actual test was you know other stuff, and that was like the Jean Grey test. That was the all right. I have this dragon egg. I don't know what to do with it. I can't get it to wake up. Uh, maybe there's a magical way. I'll have every student who comes through try to wake it up. Because if they do, oh shit. But if they don't, whatever. They're a normal magic student. They go to the normal magic school. The fact that Twilight woke it up was probably unexpected. I mean, look, Celestia reacted like, uh-oh, and dealt with it and gave her the dragon. Yet no one else has dragons. No other magical ponies. Well, Even in, in, uh, in Canterlot, no, like, no one else. There's no dragons there. Spike's yeah. the only one, so maybe... But they still, they have to deal with dragons because they live in the same world with them. She's been around for thousands of years. They've dealt with dragons at least four or five times, right? 
You know, she knows Spike. She can study him directly. And I right? think she when is. That's why she keeps such close tabs on him. I think she knows, but in all those thousands of years of her life that from before, she's met many dragon encounters and has learned more things that we do not know. I, however, do think she knows a lot less than she would like other people to believe. And I think this whole dragon egg thing was just kind of, I got to learn more about dragons. This is my best also, shot. Also, how can the dragons? How can the dragons just don't freaking? You saw how many there were. How many different kinds there were? They could have just incinerated Equestria, right? What was Celestia gonna do about it? So the question would be, why would they do that? What would motivate a dragon to destroy as opposed to the steal? The ponies got mad good stuff. They could, you know, destroy everything, and then you know, gold doesn't melt, dude. So who would win, Celestia versus like the red dragon or the green dragon we saw? Who we would don't win, know. Celestia versus all the dragons. Uh, she could just bring the sun down on him, maybe. Can she? I don't know. Would she have to? Maybe that's what destroyed the previous country with the old Pony Sisters castle. Uh, it's some very <laughs> war. She brought the sun down. There was dragons living it. And then also, what separates dragons from things like sea serpents and hydras? Like, are they related to the dragons? I know. Are Steve, they just other scaly none of them, beasts? As far as we can tell, have cutie marks. Steven Magnet didn't even have one. Right. But it's like, you know, those te typically count as magical beasts. We've seen a lot of magical beasts of Greek type origin, right? But a dragon isn't really a magical beast. It's a dragon. It's a, like a different category but in the they, monster manual. They are. They understand language. They're sentient. They speak. But they're in that class, like uh, donkeys and mules. Uh, they speak. They're part of society, but they don't have cutie marks. They don't have that pony magic. Gilda didn't have a cutie mark. Zakora does, but we don't hey, know. Well, is that a cutie mark that could just be a zebra pattern? We also learned recently that cutie marks are only in the fur. They're not on the underlying skin. There's no like cutie tattoo hidden under that. That's correct. I wonder, I mean, we don't see any bonies who are bald by choice. It's really weird. But, I mean, cutie marks existed pre-Celestia, right? Yep. You know, it's like... So the mat, you know, it's like it's weird because like what parts of the magic they were managing the weather when they didn't live in Equestria. So I think there is, I think it really is the whole show. Friendship is magic, right? I think it's pony friendship so has a friend magical power that will go wherever the ponies are. So whatever the pony kingdom is is a magical. So kingdom. it's like a like an egregore, a zeitgeist, like the pony friendship. Right. Like friendship is civilization is magic. Right. Even without Celestia, right? Wherever the ponies live, that becomes a magical place where weather can't do its own thing. And if the ponies moved, then that, right? And because the ponies don't live in the Erevry Forest, right? So it's like the ponies have to manage their weather wherever they are, right? You know, as they're branching out into the Wild West, suddenly they have to manage their weather there. The, you know, the weather that was doing its own thing, now ponies move in and it becomes magical territory, spreading their influence. And now the, the Pegasi have to come and make it so, rain. So back to dragons and Spike, I, I have a, a new theory that I kind of just thought of. So. Spike was awoken by Twilight. I remember he got gigantic, but in a derpy way, and then they brought him back down. That's right. So he keeps, I, whenever he gets big, it's always in a different way, right? When, like he got big immediately when he was born due to Twilight's magic that also turned her parents into like a plotted plant. Yep. Right. But he got big in like as like a weird shape, right? And then he imagined himself as sort of like more humanoid big. And then he, when he was crazy greedy, he, he got, got kind of gangly. And, he got sort of long and snake, right? But in no cases did he have wings. Nope. So my question or my po my posit here is that he was an immature egg that was woken up early because Twilight woke it up. That's not how normal dragons probably come out. So he's probably messed up in some way, either with pony magic. Magic has messed with his core dragon -ness. Spike is definitely different from your average dragon with his no wing situation and his fire that I mean he can cook things with the fire. But he also teleports things at the fire. No, and... we do know the dragons know about Celestia because when he coughed up that ladder, they're like, oh, you're with Celestia. From the desk of Princess Celestia. Dear Spike, please tell <laughs> Get this, guys. Spike's pen pals with a Namby Pamby Pony Princess. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, he, they read the letter and it was said from Princess Celestia. So they're like, oh, a letter from these pen pals with the Pony Princess. But I wonder if they, but they know the ponies have a princess. They didn't seem like it surprised. It said from Princess Celestia. Yeah. They knew it was from a pony. I mean. But they knew enough about ponies to know that, uh, you know, they don't have a high opinion of ponies. Well, At least yeah. the adolescent dragons. If you were a dragon, I don't think I'd have a high opinion of anyone else that wasn't a dragon either yeah especially if i was a big dragon dragons also they clearly, didn't have a high opinion of phoenixes who are badass nor did they have a high opinion of crackle <laughs> no they didn't 
There are different kinds of dragons. There are. But we've only seen one type up to this point. But Spike is the only one that didn't have wings, right? Even with all the different types, they all had certain things in common no matter what. Yep. And Wings was one of them, and Spike was the only visible exception. But he's not a Lindworm, and he's not a Steven Magnet style he's sea serpent. He's not a sea serpent. He's not a Minotaur. No, he's definitely a dragon. He's got the fire breathing and the scales and the spiky and the and tail. He, and he wants to make pony babies someday. I guess. I don't know. Sure.